path blur, the Adamski effect, motion blur. It has a lot of names, but what is it? What photos are a good fit for it? And how do you do it? Here we go. In its simplest terms, the Adamski effect or path blur or motion blur is creating in post-processing the look of a blurred background with a stationary subject. And there's countless ways you can do this. And I have some examples here. This is an example of a surfer and a wave that I went in and applied path blur to, obviously leaving the pier and the background clear and the surfer clear and applying the motion blur to the rest. There's an example here. Obviously there's no static subject in this, but adding that post-processing motion blur to a wave and similar effect here. What I wanna to do today is show you how we went from this picture to this picture in just a matter of moments. It's really very quick. So here's what to do. We select our image. We wanna make sure that we have a subject or two subjects as it were, where we can easily select, remove, and replace. So a subject that is silhouetted is a really good option for that. You also wanna have a background that's gonna look good, blurred out because of that motion so we have colors and textures. So pick your photograph carefully. It can be a car in a road, it can be a person on a street. The opportunities are endless. You can let your creativity flow. It's easiest when you have full access and you can see feet if it's a person, tires if it's a car, etc. But there's always ways around it. In this case, it's super simple. So we are in Lightroom with this photo. Did some basic processing to it, but this is the raw photo. We're just gonna right click, and then we're gonna move up to Edit in Photoshop and let that open up. First thing I do is unlock the background layer just so we have full freedom to edit as we'd like. After we do that, the next thing you wanna do is select your object selection tool here. Simply go in and select the object that you would like to remove. Now. Sometimes Photoshop does a perfect job of it and sometimes it doesn't. You can see in this case, it selected the person but not the board. If I just hold down shift and then select the board also, it'll select that so I have, uh, I have that entire person and board selected. And then I'm gonna push Command C to copy it and then Command V to paste it. And you can see it created a new layer here. And that layer is just this person. And so now we're gonna do that again. We're gonna select this person. You wanna make sure that you have layer zero, your background layer selected again, otherwise it, Photoshop doesn't know where it's selecting. So we'll select that person. And then again, Command C and Command V. Next step is we want to unselect these so that they're not visible. So we just click the little eyeball there so those layers aren't visible. And then we need to remove the two that we just copied or the one whatever your case might be and to do that you can do that with your your remove tool and this makes it super simple in the in the new versions of photoshop again make sure your you have your your layer zero selected or it won't do it correctly won't do it at all so select your remove tool and then simply paint over the object or person that you want removed so we're going to do that here and then we're gonna do that again here. It does not have to be perfect in this step. We just want the basic uh, shape gone. Okay, so now we have those two removed. Next step is to apply the blur. And to do that, we go up into our filter menu here. Filter, blur gallery, and path blur. And this is where we can select the speed of our path blur. Here it's whatever you think looks good. You can go anywhere from 0% to 500%. 500 is gonna be um, super abstract, which is really beautiful. In this case, I might wanna go a little bit less than that, maybe somewhere around the two to 300% range, just so some of that texture remains. Something like that I think looks great. And then I'm gonna click OK. And then once Photoshop has that brought in, we have this really beautiful blurred background. And then to add our people back in, we just go select our eyeballs and uh, it'll place them back in there. We could stop here and call it good. In this case, I think it works pretty well because we have the texture of these waves kind of masking the feet and I think it actually works. What you might want to do in certain cases is add a shadow or a reflection to these and to do that, it's, it is pretty simple. We just select our layer 
and then come down here into the effects and we add a drop shadow. Just click OK, just do it as Photoshop does it. And then we right click on drop shadow and create its own layer. And we hit OK. So now we have that layer as a drop shadow. And then we go up into our edit menu, free transform, and then we can just spin that around, pull it down, something like that. And if we're being official, we'd also want to rotate it, uh, flip it horizontally. And we do that because that, that's how a shadow would look in real life. So we just want to make sure that we do it here. It's not a huge deal in this case because it's so abstract, but it is important if you can see a little bit more detail. So then we have a little bit of shadow there, which I think looks pretty good. We could do that on layer one also, just so we can be official here. We add our drop shadow, click OK, right click our drop shadow, create a layer, click OK, select our drop shadow layer, and then come up into edit, free transform, and then we can just flip it around manually if we want, or you can flip vertically in your menu there, and then pull that shadow down, and then you can also flip it here. We can do that, we can just flip it here, and then we have our flipped shadow. So a couple different ways to do that, and then we can place it where I think it's gonna look best. No, something like that. And you know, some people will look at this and say, hey, you did it all wrong because you didn't add a layer mask. Uh, you know, fine, yeah, you, can do, you can do that. I like to keep things simple, and if there's steps that I don't need, then I'm probably not gonna do it. And in this case, we get a very similar result, if not the same result. So I think this looks great. We can uh, select all of these, right click to flatten our image, flatten image. That just puts everything back into one image. And then we close in Photoshop, we hit save, and then it's gonna pull it right back into Lightroom for us. And there we go. That's how we go quickly from this image, which is nice, but maybe nothing special, to this image, which is just super abstract, cool, and more of a work of art. Now, we could do that with really any of these. With this vehicle, we could add some path blur to add some motion to the car. We could do it with the birds to add motion in the sky. I've done it even on a, something like this, just to be artistic, where you could select your umbrella, path blur out the rest of it, just leave that umbrella there. Really cool look. However you want, you can just get, get as creative as you want. You can use that blur however feels right to you. But there you go, some quick, simple tools to use motion blur, the Damsky effect, path blur, to create art out of your photographs. Please subscribe to the channel. There's a lot more coming. I hope to have you on board.